Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for November 9th. We're not streaming today. I'm recording and uploading an unedited video because even though it's only 9-12 where I am, it feels much later to me, and I don't know if I'll last till midnight tonight. <laughs> So I'm going to record this and upload it, and then it'll be released at midnight, because that's how we do it. Alrighty then, November 9th is the 313th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 314th in leap years, with 52 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is synthetic. Synthetic is an adjective, and the dictionary definition says, of or pertaining to proceeding by or involving synthesis and synthesis has to do with the artificial execution of useful chemical reactions to obtain one or several products which occurs by physical and chemical manipulations usually involving one or more reactions that's a lot of blah 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 isn't it <laughs> In modern laboratory uses, the process is reproducible and reliable. Those are the keys right there, reproducible and reliable. And what I'm about to tell you may be a way oversimplification, but how it was explained to me when I was a kid is that synthetic means man-made, where organic means natural, occurring in nature, and synthetic means man-made. I'd like to take a moment to mention that links to my research are included in the show notes below. I ask you to go ahead and click that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with others. You can do that in a link with a link in your email, messaging, or social media. Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments section. And also there is a link in the show notes to my This Day in History playlist. Uh, you can see all of them if you want to. Set yourself up a little binge watch day. <laughs> the early ones are really, my delivery is so cringy. I'm, I'm much more comfortable in front of the camera now. <laughs> but uh, just, uh, you know, history, elegant gossip. I'm telling you all about it. <laughs> Let's see, one more thing. Okay, well, all right, I guess that's enough introduction. We can start now with November 9th of 1620, when pilgrims aboard the Mayflower sighted land at Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Land ahoy. <laughs> On November 9th, 1729, Spain, France, and Great Britain signed the Treaty of Seville. Now, this was one of those treaties that officially, officially ended a war, but it didn't necessarily satisfy all the underlying disagreements that had led to that war in the first place. Or, as Mr. Bowers might say, in the first damn place. <laughs> but uh, I think that happens a lot, and we're just going to let that uh, to them at this time. They signed the treaty, so the war was over. There you go. This is the birthday of Gail Borden, born November 9th, 1801 in Norwich, New York. That's in Shenango County, I believe, and I have been to Norwich on purpose. How about that? So, hey, to my New York friends. <laughs> Gail Borden ended up in Texas, of all things, and he helped plan the cities of Houston and Galveston. In 1853, he developed a process for making sweetened condensed milk. This way, it didn't have to be refrigerated. You could store it longer and people could buy it in a store. Sweetened condensed milk. Brilliant, brilliant idea. That product still exists, by the way, and appears under more than one brand, but you can still find Borden's Eagle brand sweetened condensed milk. A handy ingredient as we come into Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, my grandmother made a, a lemon pie, Eagle brand lemon pie. 
and um, it was delicious. My dad preferred that pie to just about any kind of cake that you could think of for his birthday. Anyway, back to Gail Borden. He lived to the age of 72. November 9th, 1872 marks the date of the Great Boston Fire of 1872. This was Boston's largest fire and ranks as one of the most costly fire-related property losses in American history. It took him 12 hours to get that thing under control. For as large an area as burned and as much destruction as it caused, it's something of a miracle that only 13 people died in that fire. Two of those were firemen. On November 9, 1906, Theodore Roosevelt became the first sitting president of the United States to make an official trip outside the country, which he did to inspect the Panama Canal. This is the birthday of actress Hedy Lamarr, born November 9, 1914. She was born in Austria. Now, she acted in some 30 films, and that's where most of us will have heard of her. And... She was also a brilliant inventor. She co-invented an early version of frequency hopping spread spectrum device as a guidance system for radio controlled torpedoes during one of those wars. A variety of spread spectrum techniques have been used in present day Wi-Fi and are used right now in Bluetooth technology. Brilliant and beautiful, Hedy Lamar. She lived to the age of 85. This is the birthday of Spyro T. Agnew, born November 9th, 1918. He was the 39th Vice President of the United States and lived to the age of 77. This is the birthday of astronomer, astrophysicist, and cosmologist Carl Sagan, born November 9th, 1934. He lived to the age of 62. Also the birthday of baseball great Bob Gibson, born November 9, 1935. He was a pitcher for the St. Louis Cardinals and was inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1981. Mr. Gibson lived to the age of 84. On November 9, 1960, Robert McNamara was named president of Ford Motor Company the first non-family member to serve in that post. A month later, he resigned so that he could join the administration of the newly elected John F. Kennedy. On November 9, 1965, several U.S. states and parts of Canada were hit by a series of blackouts lasting up to 13 hours in the Northeast blackout of 1965. I remember that a little bit, sort of. Yep, I do. Over 30 million people and 800, no, no not 800, 80,000. That's still a lot of miles. 80,000 80, square miles were in the dark during this time. On November 9th, 1985, Gary Kasparov, age 22 of the Soviet Union, became the world's, yeah, the youngest, yeah, I don't have to mix my words up. They're already mixed up. <laughs> Let's do that one over. <laughs> On November 9th, 1985, Garry Kasparov, age 22, of the Soviet Union, became the youngest world chess champion when he beat fellow Soviet Anatoly Karpov. East Germany opened checkpoints in the Berlin Wall on November 9th, 1989, allowing its citizens to travel to West Berlin. The chemical element Darmstadtium was discovered on November 9th, 1994. Its symbol is uppercase D, lowercase s, and its atomic number is 110. It is a synthetic element. It's extremely radioactive and is thought to be a transition metal. It's named after the city in which it was discovered, Darmstadt, Germany. Darmstadtium. Firefox 1.0 was released on November 9, 2004. These 16 years later, we're on version 82.0.2. <laughs> 
That's a lot of Firefox, isn't it? Now, as soon as we're done with today's This Day in History, I would like to encourage you to go check out the show notes below. Click on over to the My Day in History playlist and look for last year's Day in History recording for November 9th. I covered some other interesting subjects and in more depth. One of them brought me to tears. <laughs> other things that happened on November 9th in that edition that I think you'll enjoy. And I think that's going to do it for us today. I hope you learned something you didn't know before. As always, links to my research are included in the show notes. Give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Let's see what else. All right, we talked about the playlist. All righty, we're done. Thank you so much for watching. And um, come back tomorrow. We'll do it again.